listeners. So, Andrea, thank you so much for being this, doing this Red and NYC, which I like to call interview series. Sure. How are you otherwise? Uh, happy to be back on Red and NYC again. And, um, you know, I just love the network. I think it's just fantastic the way um, we've really reinvented uh, with this series. And, you know, I love sharing, sharing insights and, and talking trends with people in my field. No, you know, and one thing I like about being part of this Red and NYC event and being part of with Selman is just getting to meet people like yourself, uh, Selman and all the other people that I've interviewed is, is such a wonderful thing because I, I get to learn so much from you guys. And, and I just love the entrepreneurship that you guys bring to the field. And, and I, like I said, I'm always learning. Sure. Yeah, I, I can. I can actually see your face now. So now we're good. <laughs> oh, so you can see me. Okay, good. Uh, let me make sure. Hold on a second. Okay, so you can see me. Yes, I can. I can. All right. Perfect. All the glare the beginning. So yeah. Yeah. No, I have some we're glare too. I just want to make sure that we are on, and I think we are. Uh, and I just want to make sure I see you and there you go. Good. So Andrew, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into this business? Were you always entrepreneurial? Was this something that you always wanted to do as a little girl at five? No, no I have to tell you, I, I resisted until the ripe old age of 39, uh, being an entrepreneur, even though my dad told me it was genetically ingrained in me. I didn't want to do this. Like this is, this is stressful. Um, I always just wanted to be an executive. Um, and affect change would be, you know, part of a team. Uh, and now I'm, you know, I am El Jefa, you know, La Jefa, and I, I don't want to be, I'd rather, you know, just be like a faithful servant. Um, uh, and I have to tell you, funny enough, I actually was with my old boss yesterday and I said, boss, and he's like, yeah, you haven't worked for me in years. And I was like, no, you're always going to be boss. <laughs> like, this is stressful. Why did I pick this? <laughs> He's like, you're doing great. Like, stay in this. This is exactly where you should be, you know? So what does, like, as, as president at DNA, DNA Construction Advisors, obviously the question, you know, the you see advisors, but what else do you advise for your clients? Or do you work with all types of people? Or are we talking just developers or anybody else in the construction field, which could be contractors and, and yeah, people so, like that? Yeah, um, it's very... Um, it's very multifaceted. So I work as um, helping helping developers with vendor selection, getting them access, well, getting uh, MWBE uh, contractors access to these large developers. But more than anything, the developers want to do business with them. They do reach out to me saying, listen, I would love to know who new can I bring to the game? Who could I really be um, affecting change for in this environment? And, you know, they have strong requirements for MWBEs. And, and I, I love being the resource for, for getting everybody, you know, the, a Latina or a Latino owned company, um, getting people like a, a, a woman owned um, business. It, to me, that's just, I love helping the underdog. So that's the clients love that. Uh, developers call to call up on me for that every day. Uh, but also helping contractors, right? I've made a ton of money for the big guys over the years. and. Um, I really love that I'm focusing my energy and my efforts on giving people a real chance, people that this could save their business or this could really be a game changer in the trajectory of where their company goes. Now, do you, <laughs> are you more in the local base, like in the New York, New Jersey area, or do you cover all the, uh, most of the country? What does, uh, how does uh, Andrea um, focuses yeah, I mean, her business? Yeah, I'm definitely in, New, in the New York City metro area. Um, my focus has always been on uh, on a New York City interiors and corn shell. Um, I do have a strong background in pharma in New Jersey, whether it be you know bio companies um, or um, hospitals and, and um, pharmaceutical uh, corporate headquarters, just because of where my, my you know some of my accounts have been over the years. Um, but I do have some work in Florida. <laughs> I, okay. I, that's actually my own personal interest. I just want to get down to Miami and have a justifiable reason to be there. Um, and I actually have a project, uh, two projects in Texas, one in, uh, one in South Texas and one in um, Houston. So, so yeah. you're telling me that you get, you get to travel, which is kind of cool. So in theory, or, or this like, is all... then I can leave the house again, but like for right now, this is as far as I get, right? This so is... it's all virtual right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I, 
just been far too busy to be able to step away from from New York City right now. There's just way too much going on. Right. So what's, what's, what's happening in the world today with the pandemic? Has it affected business in any way for you guys at all? Yeah, I needed this. Um, I needed this to to get kind of the audience to think out of the box, right? So I had always been disruptive marketing. I had always been the trailblazer saying, let's do something different. Let's stop following the herd. You know, let's stop being sheep here, people. And um, everyone was very resistant, right? You know, I have a sales and marketing company. So I take both of those elements, I put them under one roof and then they outsource the entire process to me. Right. That's a very uncomfortable concept unless you're in a time of change, right? Um, so people would say, you know, I have, I have a kid that does my website or I don't need a website, I don't need findability. And now everybody knows that that's not the truth, right? right. Life has changed, you do need to be findable in a, in a, in a, in a digital marketing platform. Um, and, you know, all of the, this traditional BD people have been kind of furloughed and let go. Um, and they're looking at what, what their options are within the market. Uh, the companies are looking at cost efficient ways to, to satisfy those, you know, to satisfy that growth of the pipeline without the cost, right? So people weren't into my company as a solution as easily because it was a, it's, a, it's a very out of the box concept. And right. now it just makes sense, right? So it's almost like I had created it in advance of everybody being really comfy with it. <laughs> well, especially too, because it's what you hit it on the head. You have to be findable. Uh, I love that word, even though it, may, it might not be a good word or or a word in the dictionary, but it is true. You have to be findable. You have to be you have to be present online. And I think we talked before the show uh, yeah. about a week ago. We're talking about Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and all that. So, do you advise your clients to to make a, a, a yeah. videos on 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 yeah. YouTube or Instagram? Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. So, there's a couple of things that I've I've said are just a requirement in this market, right? They are one, stop sending those daily emails that no one wants to see. These drip campaign emails that are just cheesy and, and they're they're flooding everyone's inbox. Everybody's got an official statement on like even my dog food company had an official statement on COVID. You know, it's 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 too much content when people don't want it, right? When they want to be in their inbox, they want to be efficient. But they do want every, everybody, everybody scrolls Instagram every morning like it's the paper, right? Okay. Some for different reasons, but everybody scrolls Instagram. <laughs> so right. a push ad on Instagram, I think can go wonders. Um, uh, clickable content that leads to short explainer videos, like how mm. you and I have discussed. Right. Find a and people don't want to read your freaking email. But if you send them a link, right, to a little explainer, one bullet, and then the link to the explainer, uh, that could be a 30 second, 60 second video. Now, right. now, you, now you can pitch people without having to get on the Zooms and you can really have a conversation with people without on their time, right? Because chances are their time's at two o'clock in the morning because we all have the most bizarre schedule in the world. Right. right. Um, so I think that being able to create content on social media, not Facebook, in my opinion. Okay. I think Facebook right now is <clears throat> for the angry and bored. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I, think, I think that Instagram is for the entrepreneur. Instagram is for the startup. They look like they're having fun. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> there was Wi-Fi. This is why we're here. <laughs> ah, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, so I, 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 I definitely to... think that Instagram is the way to go. And YouTube is the way um, is the way to to really explain to customers how your business operates. So, you, in, in your opinion, since you've been doing this, because I'm I'm taking notes as you see me. Um, we're talking about Instagram. Do a short video. Obviously, provide content and uh, use YouTube efficiently. Now, with it, so so if we do send an email. It should just say, hey, my name is so-and-so, check out this, you know, 30 second video, I mean, 30 second uh, clip or 60 second clip explaining uh, what, what we do as a business or are we looking for business also? Or we're providing content, what, how, how should we always format? I think, I, I think your, your video should be one extraordinarily short, extraordinarily short. No one wants a five minute, you know, 
life story of anything. Everything right. should be, you know, 25 seconds, 45 seconds. It, if it's really well produced, you know, 90 seconds. Okay. Um, so you have to keep it short, but so I would make sure that all of your content is, um, it's, it's for uh, giving informative information on trends that you're the expert for mm -hmm. um, and explaining your offerings in, in bite size right in bite-sized pieces that's it bite size you know it's yeah. funny i had on on uh on my podcast i interviewed this gentleman uh, talking about marketing and he said the same thing you just said and i'm like well maybe there is a trend especially on the real estate side if we're looking for for sellers and mm -hmm. you know we present ourselves in 30 seconds or whatever saying hey i'm interested in buying your property give me a yeah. call i could explain more in detail blah 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 right. in other words show who we are and show our personality so mm -hmm. is that more of the trend that you're seeing now especially on social media i think yes but like just don't turn it into your own little narcissistic um <laughs> i gotcha don't go nuts. Like, you know, keep it simple. Like, keep it simple, stupid, right? Like, keep it simple. Um, you don't need to go live every day on Instagram. Like, you don't need to, you know, begin some kind of an inner monologue where you're, you know, just discussing life, your feelings, you know, all day long. You don't right. need that much content. Like, unless you're Gary V and you actually have something inspirational to say, and that's why people are logging in. Right. Gotcha. Make yeah. It, well, Gary V is, yeah. flood the feed, you know, like tone it down, you know? So at, so at, at, at your company, right. Being the president yeah. are, when you look, when you're looking for clients or clients are looking for you, you're doing the same thing, presenting a short video or they're presenting a short video. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is, are we seeing with, with what's happening in the world today? Are we seeing more and more, networking being presented online more so because of what's um, happening are, are we seeing that in the future i see a large opening um right now for people previewing prospects right so i might be vaguely interested in partnering with your company um but I'm gonna like stalk you a little bit first, right? So I'm gonna follow you on Instagram and I've already yelled at you five times. Like you need to have an Instagram. I'm, the, the, yes, I I'm, yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm supposed to be selling my company and all I'm trying to do is get you to get an Instagram account. Um, right, right. <laughs> so um, I use it to kind of like stalk a little bit, like figure out, is this somebody I would wanna do business with, right? Cause I'm not gonna waste a trip into Manhattan, right? Unless it's worth my money and it's worth my time, right? So. Right. I'll look on somebody's, you know, website. That could just mean they, they put a lot of money into a website. That doesn't mean that I like their company or what they have to offer. Sure. I like seeing the feedback because I think it shows you a little bit about a person's personality, about a business's personality and, and, and um, what they think is important, whether they're, you know, ego driven, which in New York City construction is there's just a, no, nothing more than the, than the machismo, you know, like the ego of a man. Um, and, um, I, I get to, I get to know a lot about the companies that I'm going to be doing business with um, through what matters to them, and and I think it comes across in their in their social media content for sure. Yeah, you know it, it's funny because us, we as a, let's say a, a a potential client, we have to show what I guess our credibility is. That what you're looking for? Also, on, is that what I'm getting by you being online whether like you say you got a, a ten thousand dollar website but that's not going to be enough yeah, for I don't you. Care. like you're like your right. kid your, yeah your kid probably made it for you like i don't care what what your website looks like i mean i want you to have one and i want it to be findable and i can't stand when somebody tells me that they oh it's right my kid does my website and i'm like that's great because when i googled your name you were five on the list and the four things before you or either your competitors or some really negative information that you shouldn't have just ignored, right? Something really negative that with some other content, you could have buried that content. Let right. me bury that content, like, because you're killing yourself because every single person is going to check you out in some way, whether it be on social media or whether it be on the internet. And if you're allowing negative content to supersede your basic business profile information, yeah. you have already missed out on more customers than you will ever know. Wow. And people okay. just take it for granted. People yeah, but, take it completely for granted. Right. So, but if we, so in other words, if you see a negative ad or a negative uh, 
uh, statement on someone, you try you try to help them get rid of that uh, negative statement because it could be uh, someone that's jealous or someone not, that's just not trolling not you or. But I'll explain to them what what they're... Yeah. What I will say is, you know, if you're one, if you're telling me you already have a web developer, right? If you're telling me you already pay a marketing company, I'm telling you that you're wasting your money, right? Because if you have the perfect branded content of, you know, this curated, you know, content planning that you spent like $60,000 to set up and you have the pens and the folders and you bring out your little tchotchkes with, you know, the, like this, this, um, the construction helmet, right? But when yeah. I Google the company <laughs> name, it talks about your your former employee's indictment. I'm going to say, get over the pens, right? Stop buying the pens. The pens right. aren't right? Change the content. Get rid of the one bad press moment that was that's in your company's checkered past because no one cares about the tchotchkes, right? I haven't even yet to this day printed out a business card. I don't need it. If you know my name or if you know how to find me, you'll find me. Right. I, I need a reputation that is verifiable. The business card is not important. You know what not, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the business, I, I got you. Tell people, Google me. Do it. Because guess what? I show you why I'm a marketing company. It's ba 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 ba. Like there's plenty of content for you. My Google, my listing, perfect. It has videos, it has clickable links, my website. My, my social media, all of them are unified. They all feed off of one another. I have multiple platforms, I have multiple businesses and they all talk to one another. That's creating, that's creating wealth. You know, that's creating a business plan. Right, can you, can you touch more uh, based on that on how everything interacts with each other? Can you explain like in uh, how would someone that's looking to get into a business will yeah. use YouTube, Instagram, um, anything else? Huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I work with companies, I give them like a full assessment of, of what it is that they have um, on digitally on them what yeah. they're missing, where the errors lie. And then from there, I tell them where their weaknesses are, right? So the weaknesses could be that, this, that the website that they have doesn't have great mobile viewing, right? That um, they don't have short video content in their Google My Businesses. Putting a short video and having a Twitter account. You no, know, I don't want Twitter. I don't know why I need Twitter, but having Twitter gets me um, higher ranking on my Google findability than anything else, right? So it's just the facts. So having these little steps in the process and utilizing the free advertising that's available right now to, to small local businesses, especially construction companies, um, Yelp, Google, they all have advertising and free advertising campaigns, Facebook, Instagram, SBA, they all have grants and free information on um, advertising right now during COVID. If you're not utilizing those, now you're just lazy. Wow. Okay. So it, I'm now hypothetical. Um, I'm a contractor, which I'm not, but I was a con if I'm a contractor and I'm looking for business, my business model is going to Home Depot and hopefully, hopefully word of mouth. What does right. William Morales need to do? Again, it's hypothetical. I'm not a, in a construction, but William, William Morales has to, yeah. William so Morales word of mouth, you should be getting Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you have, yeah, you would definitely be having to, to encourage your customers to give you reviews, right? Because let them be your proof. Let them speak for you, not only when they bring you up in conversation, but then, you know, throughout uh, that process, let them represent you and be your advertisers, right? So that could be, you know, taking a, a short email and taking a quote out of that and then, and then posting that on your Instagram, you know, love when I get this great, great feedback from customers. Um, some of it would be little videos that you can have your customers, right? There's some, there's some people whose websites are just completely filled with videos of referrals, um, wow. especially contractors, because it makes people feel comfortable. If you, if you love that contractor or whatever business owner enough that you let them record a video of you to post it on their website, you loved that contractor, right? Like you loved them. It was a no-brainer for you. Right. I felt so good about this person, this person, this person's um, 
services that I felt comfortable endorsing them on video. No one likes the way they look on video except for nurses. Right. So <laughs> right. For them to do that, you know that person really did love that product, whatever it was. That speaks volumes. You know, I think it should always be balanced as well. I'd say I don't think right now, especially in 2020, everybody just pushes themselves like too much into one direction. Um, be a little bit of everything. Like you don't have to go full Gary V. You don't have to go full Instagram live, you know, bothering the shit out of people all day long. I don't want your drip campaign emails and never ever you pick up the phone and just call me, right? Right. Um, it should be balanced. You should do a little bit of everything. So you don't know what works for some people and what work doesn't work for others. Right. I, I, and, I've, and I've heard that where some people prefer um, talking, you know, whether it's face to face or on the phone, or some people prefer just contacting me either through LinkedIn, email or whatever. Or do you run into people like that that prefer just uh, the written word than, yeah. than doing face to face with you or? You, you you make know. A, yeah, you make a really, really good point. LinkedIn, in my opinion, um, and I think I'm having a little bit of a connection issue. Um, no, I can see you fine. Opinion, okay. In my opinion, LinkedIn is for people that are looking for jobs and desperate salespeople, just so you know. That's my opinion, right? <laughs> because if you actually control business for, for construction, if you're a developer, you never log on to your LinkedIn because it's just people bothering you. Like, me, I'm needy. I want a purchase order. I want a purchase order. So um, stay balance right don't just make um because you know how many financial planners want to send you messages i just assume every time i get a message from a stranger it's from a financial planner trying to sign me up right for insurance or 401k like can, that's it you know a absolutely i definitely agree with you there every time like i look at someone's profile and i see that they're uh, in business development and this and that and yeah. also and, and i make the mistake of of accepting 10 mm. seconds later, I get a message. Yeah. Hey, and then how they can talk I... to themselves in your inbox for days. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. 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 Uh, and I'm saying, is, is this work? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no. And I'm not. I, 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 I try to, if I, if I accept someone or if I look for, a, you know, someone to say hi to, you know, yeah. this is down the road. I'm not looking for business right away. If I'm looking for a yeah, mortgage broker or whatever, but it's just, my God, you're right, Andrea. It's, constant i mean i got so much in my inbox that after a while i just put them in archives and i have to tell you i first of all there's been there's people that have conversations in my inbox one-sided for years right i've never even opened the messages but they just keep going right it's just like you know well i'm like like you said happy birthday repeatedly right <laughs> right 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 every year <laughs> <laughs> I've never answered. Like I've got business to you. I don't know you, right? I don't know you. That's that's part of it. So I think what I use on my LinkedIn that I think is a little bit different is I just say something kind of like um uh supportive, right? So during COVID, um, and everybody was saying, no, there's nothing going on, guys. There's nothing going on. Like, eh, no business, no purchase orders, no transactions. And I was like, well, that's funny because I bought a fire pit a week ago. It's still sitting in the box, right? right. I haven't slept. I'm still sitting at my desk. It's 11 o'clock at night. And I couldn't get through this workload, even if I tried, right? Wow. But I was ramping up in the middle of COVID and, and, and scaling my business. If that's the case, stop with the with the nonsense that y'all are telling each other, right? Like they're all their own little sales negs. Remember, like back in the don't be a neg when you, say, you know sales teams. Sure, um, sure. They all became their own little neg. Like they they all started like feeding themselves the rebuttal, right? And that's not. We're not going to get anywhere doing that, guys. Can we just all stop, right? I posted a picture that said that. You know, it's been a week. I would love a mojito, Corona cocktail and to use my fire pit and I'm just too busy. Can we all stop letting people use the narrative that nothing's happening? And everybody responded, you're right. We're sick of it. There's still, that's just for lazy salespeople or, or that's just, you know, I've never been busier. I hate when everybody talks about nothing's happening. Like they're just the ones that didn't see the moment, uh, their opportunity, their pivot, whatever it is, you know? Um, and that's the stuff I post on LinkedIn. I don't tell people that I'll sell them a website or, you know, make them a logo or oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. like, 
want to hear that. Like, I don't want to hear your value proposition on freaking Instagram. And or, that's what, yeah, and that's what I get though on LinkedIn. My God, I or emails, unsolicited e emails where I'm like, oh, I could build your website. I looked at your website, pretty good, but I could get you up in Google High, and I'm like, yeah. no, dude, or I, I don't yeah, know, you. Yeah. I don't know your business right model. Now. Yeah, so so with with, with in the, being in the construction field, or and this is a tough prediction to make, obviously, but I've been hearing in the office space that more and more uh, people are pulling back their, their workforce. I'm hearing mm. as high as 20% of the workforce to work from home. Is that a future trend that we might see? And in, in, is that something uh, that's predictable or obviously we, got, we have to wait and see? So I think in some aspects, yes. And in some aspects, it's not realistic, right? I personally, um, I let my employees work three days a week. Uh, they pick the three days and it's like 11 to five, right? Because I don't know about you, but I don't think I could ever, I couldn't, I couldn't work a nine to five back when I had one. <laughs> like I, um, <laughs> um, just being That's okay. Myself, it's okay. Right? Um, so because of that, I really think that it's time that we revisit, right? Um, I do want my employees in my face, but that's because that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of manager I am. Like I wanna, I wanna like listen to them when they're on the phone and be like, no, no, say it this way next time. Um, I love that mentorship um, type atmosphere, especially with people that are doing something new and different. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, I like having them, I like having them near me. I, and I, I'm not a very trustworthy person either, because like I said, I was incapable of working a nine to five, like when I had one. So, um, yeah, like I, I want to see someone and I want to see that they're actually working and I don't think I can, that remote is going to be in my life. Right. Yeah. But, no. I, but I did yeah. just join, I did just join the classic Clark Cub in, in, uh, in Manhattan, right on the West side highway. And that will be our home. That will be our office moving forward. It is. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So I think that's going to be our our uh, our we work, if you will. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. We have a few a uh, few more minutes here. So I wanted to talk about uh, Reddit NYC and yeah. how did you come in contact with Reddit NYC and and sell? Oh, he's a powerhouse. I mean, he's uh, you know he's been at it forever. Uh, his, you know, his network contacts, you know, nationwide, like in all of the hot cities, um, you know, he's on the pulse of it. And I think uh, the pulse actually, I'm thinking of Rena, uh, who I was with yesterday. Uh, she's been on, she's been on the show as well. Um, he's, 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 an, he's an institution in networking within construction and real estate and development. And I, I, I'm so thankful uh, to, be, to be a part of this network uh, before COVID, during COVID, and in every new way moving forward. Um, so yeah, I mean, thank God he brings us together and we're able to help each other, right? Because these are all educational. This isn't about what I sell as a company. This is like, I've learned some shit along the way, right? No, I, definitely. I, 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 you know, and it's funny because I remember, um, Andrea, a, 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 now it's a year and two or three months. I remember when I went to him in June of last year and I told him, hey, listen, I'm interested in work with you for the, from, you know, for the podcast. And he goes, yeah, let's start right now. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't even ready, but you know what? I, I've been enjoying it for over a year now. Um, like I said, I, and I agree with you, Selma is a master networker. And, yeah, uh, sure. and and he told me his email list and I was like, Jesus, I'm, I got like a couple of hundred on my email yeah. list. <laughs> I, know, so I keep doing these things because I just want access to that list. Just want. <laughs> that so, I will hey. send out emails every day well, I will that, send you have to, yes that list every single day no definitely so Andrea listen one first of all I appreciate you being on this Red and NYC interview series that's what I call it you're an entrepreneur you're a juggernaut you kicking ass if somebody wants to look for you what's the best way um you you know google me I mean I think it's that simple uh you know my name is my name is like I said clickable and findable um, my name's Andrea Messis Bruno. My website is daconstructionadvisors.com. Uh, my email is Andrea Messis at daconstructionadvisors.com, as well as Andrea Messis at fixmyrank.com. And that's www.fixmyrank.com. Fixmyrank.com. Sounds good. Well, listen, Andrea, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm going to go have 
go have a drink then. <laughs> All right, you do that, and I'll join you one day. <laughs> yes, for thank sure, you. absolutely. All right, Andrew, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This was this was too easy. Okay. <laughs> Next time I ask you harder questions. <laughs> Anyway, guys, that was Andrew Messrs. Bruno. Again, she's the president at DNA Construction Advisors, LLC. Uh, thank, you know, I'm going to thank her again for joining us in this busy schedule, her busy schedule. And sorry that if you're looking at my computer, my shelf looks uh, crooked, but it's not. Uh, it's just a stand I'm using. Anyway, I want to thank uh, Selman Yalsen for putting this event together. You can find them at redinnyc.com. That's redinnyc.com. You can find me at p2prealestate.com. And before we go, guys, I just wanted to say hello to some of the sponsors that I didn't get a chance to this uh, when we started. So go sponsor Carlos Seneca from CNA uh, Seneca Construction. Go sponsor Vince Soriero from Property Shark. Silver sponsor. Uh, Laura Rivera from, what is it? Ah, uh, Challenge Elevator, Barry Redsda from Sky, Sky, Skyline Scaffolding. I also want to thank Amit Prasad from VIEW. Uh, Yaya Mustak from EcoSafety. Michael Zeisman from City Bay Capital. Uh, Tariq Zuri from Hydrotech. Um, let's see, sorry guys. Hydrotech Elevator World, Shoka Mamedev from Remax 100 and John De La Fuente from Real Estate Prince. I wanna thank all of them for being sponsors for Red NYC. And again, my name is Willie Morales from Peer to Peer Real Estate. You can find me at peer to number two, peerrealestate.com. And don't forget, tune into and check out uh, Selman's site at redinnyc.com. Anyway, on behalf of Selman, thank you so much. My name is Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks everybody. And please stay safe.